Chapter 12 First Step into a Larger World The Resonance Cascade was a few days away from its next hyperspace jump. Aboard the mercenary warship, Trig and Tenna were pulled out of their daily routines when a seemingly innocuous conversation took a sudden turn. It happened while the crew was settling into the cafeteria after a long day of work. Trig, who never did well in history class at school, asked Tenna if she knew why there were tens of thousands of Sutherians living in exile on the Lightwater Moon. I don't really know, Tenna confessed. The R4 mercenaries overheard this and joined in the conversation. It's all about the expulsion, Glossom explained. Ten years ago, Emperor Kanto ordered all psionic people removed from the Empire. Yeah, except back then, Kanto was president and we were a republic, Bronley corrected him. Just three years before Malum fell, Ponico added, everyone was still on edge, thinking our psionic infiltrators were still around. Were they? Trigg asked. I'm sure many of them are still in hiding, Ponico admitted, acting as sleeper agents, waiting for a signal that will never come. A dreamy expression came over Tenna's face. Waiting for your master to come back so devotedly, it sounds almost romantic. I think you've got your head screwed on backwards, Trick teased her. I wouldn't wait for him to come back. I'd go out and try to find him. That would be so brave, Tenna replied, looking at Trig with starry eyes. Captain Cantor slammed his hand on the table, making such a loud noise that even Chef paused in its work to look at him. How did we not see it before? Cantor said, more to himself than the others. Then he looked up at Tenna. So, when were you going to tell us that you're a telepath? There was a moment of stunned silence. Trigg gazed at Tenna, open-mouthed. She looked around, confused. No, I'm not, Tenna finally said. I've never read anyone's mind before. Cantor was not satisfied by her answer. But you lived on Lightwater, so you must be one of the expelled telepaths from the homeworld. I was three years old when the expulsion happened, Tenna protested. I can't be a telepath. Ponico raised a hand, which caused all the mercenaries to fall silent. Miss Honora, I believe you are both right and wrong, Ponico said. Almost a hundred thousand people were exiled ten years ago, but... Most of them were innocent, accused of being scions by others who would see them gone. At first, I thought you were among their number, but now I'm not so certain. What? Tenna gasped. So she's a scion, like you used to be, Trigg asked excitedly. Ponico pondered his answer for a moment. I think, children, both of you are latent psionics. Another pause. Trigg felt his heart racing. A wide array of daydreams suddenly appeared in the forefront of his mind as he imagined all the things he could do with telepathy and telekinesis. Trigg started to lose himself in a particularly juvenile fantasy involving telekinesis and a girl's skirt when tactical officer Rulon's voice brought him back to reality. The odds of that statement being true are astronomical. Having two scions on our ship is a very unlikely coincidence. In my line of work, there are no coincidences, Ponico replied. Captain, how long until we get to the home world? I want to put these two through some tests. See if they really are latent scions. You've got a day, Cantor replied gathering up his dining tray and silverware. That's all I can give you. We already got an appointment with the prison ship to see that boy's mother. So, uh... Don't hurt him badly. A few hours later, Trigg and Tenna were summoned to a lounge on the starboard side of the ship. They were told to wait outside by Selborne for a few minutes, so they passed the time by talking. So, like... You know what I would do with psionic powers? Tenna asked. Make people give you free stuff? Trigg responded. Uh, you know, 
maybe. Tenna could not help but laugh. No, I would get into people's heads and find out exactly what they like. Then give them that thing so they'll like me. Wow, you've got a manipulative side, Trick said. Didn't see that coming. I just like it when people like me, Tenna said, grinning from ear to ear. Sometimes I can't tell what people think of me, and that totally stresses me out. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Trigg raised an eyebrow and tried to make himself look mysterious. Can you tell what I think of you? You like me, Tenna said without hesitation. <laughs> what? what, what? Trigg spluttered, suddenly stammering. Uh, well, uh, what? What, make, what makes you think that? Without missing a beat, Tenna said, Because the whole time we've been talking, you were staring at my chest. Trigg felt his heart stop. Then his brain locked up. He took two steps back, eyes wide, and raised his hands in shock. Uh, wait, I can explain. It's, it's not what you think. Trigg's voice was full of panic. Tenna burst out laughing and bent over, holding her sides. Spirits alive, Tenna wheezed. The look on your face! I'm gonna die! Wait, you're not mad? Trigg asked. Why would I be mad? Tenna said, wiping tears from her face. That was fun! But hey, since I got you this time, you have to get me the next time around, okay? It's only fair. Tenna held out her hand for Trigg to shake. Deal? Deal. Trigg replied and shook her hand. What should have been a normal handshake quickly turned awkward as both Trigg and Tenna held on to each other for far longer than a natural handshake. Trigg never would have said this aloud, but he simply did not want to let go of Tenna's hand. He liked the way it felt. The teens jumped apart when the lounge door opened and Ponico poked his head out. Glad to hear you're having fun out here. I'm ready to begin. Come inside. The ship's lounge had been hastily rearranged for whatever Ponico was planning. Looking around, Trigg realized the room had been converted into a place for meditation. Blankets and carpets covered the floor, while additional cushions were laid out everywhere. The lighting was adjusted to a warmer orange color, and all of the window shades were removed granting a spectacular view of the starfield outside. In the center of the lounge, more cushions surrounded a coffee table. A deck of flashcards was present on the surface. Ponico told Trigg and Tenna to sit down on the cushions. I believe you are both latent psionics, Ponico began. That means you have psionic abilities, do not have the ability to use them. This is not something to worry about. Your children, most people, don't become full scions until they are adults. However, during my time in the Horde, I saw plenty of people unlock their potential at young ages. It is possible, and that is what we will attempt over the next day. Ponico picked up the deck of cards. I am going to hide the card face from your view. You must tell me what the symbol is on the card in my hand. How can we guess the symbol if we can't see the card? Trigg asked. Tenna raised her eyebrow at him. Then he understood. Oh, right. Got it. 